Meet our sun's long-lost evil twin. Scientists have long believed that stars are born with at least one companion. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much evidence to support this theory until now. A new study has found that sun-like stars initially form as wide binaries and either come together or break apart over the next million years. Some systems, like the Alpha Centauri, even form as triplets. Our sun would have been separated by a distance of 500 or more astronomical units from its twin star before it was believed to have moved farther away. The twin has been dubbed Nemesis after scientists hypothesized that it had knocked an asteroid out of orbit and sent it hurtling toward Earth. They say that asteroid eventually collided with our planet and killed off the dinosaurs. Still, Nemesis has never actually been found, and the idea that it may be responsible for catastrophic events on Earth has yet to be proved. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. The Mysteries of Space Light bursts seen on Earth finally explained. And no, it's not aliens. It was astronomer Carl Sagan who first noticed flashes of light on our home planet back in 1993. But the mystery of what they were would not be cracked until 24 years later. A NASA camera about a million miles from Earth has been capturing strange light bursts reflecting off the planet's surface, appearing both over land and water. Researchers found more than 800 glints in images taken from the Discover spacecraft between June 2015 and August 2016, and theorized they were caused by reflected sunlight. The bursts were limited to certain spots, where the angle between the Sun and Earth is the same as the angle between Earth and the spacecraft, allowing the reflected light to be picked up. The source of the reflection appeared to be ice crystals in high-altitude cirrus clouds. Sunlight would bounce off horizontally oriented particles and create the bright flashes. With that mystery solved, the researchers are now looking to study the ice crystals in hopes of determining whether they have an impact on how much light passes through the atmosphere. Something is making space music on the dark side of the moon. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes. All except a few stubborn nut jobs know that NASA astronauts landed on the moon during the 1969 Apollo 11 mission. Many of us have also seen the movie Apollo 13, in which astronaut Tom Hanks saves the day before going on to find Private Ryan. But many don't know a lot about Apollo 10, the final dress rehearsal test mission sent up before Neil Armstrong put his boots on the moon and gave us this iconic sound clip. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 10 didn't land, its mission was to orbit the moon, and that meant going over to the dark side. For over an hour, the astronauts were invisible and inaudible to Houston as they went around the far side of the moon. But while Mission Control couldn't hear anything during that hour or so, the guys on the spacecraft heard a lot, stuff the public is just starting to hear about since for decades, NASA's archives were classified. The Apollo 10 crew reported hearing weird sounds they likened to some kind of strange space music. The space music sounded like this, and NASA also recorded the crew's reaction. Do you hear that, that whistling sound? There's plenty of theories for this howling, weird space music. Magnetic fields, the atmosphere interfering with radios. But here's the thing. The moon doesn't have a magnetic field and doesn't have enough atmosphere to carry sound. So pick your theory. Some unknown boring science thing? Alien whale songs? Or maybe, just maybe, a Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders concert from Mars. We're gonna go with Ziggy. Your pick? UFO photo tweeted by NASA twin astronauts spending a year on International Space Station. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly tweeted this photo of India, as seen from space more than 155 miles above the surface of the Earth. UFO enthusiasts and alien conspiracy theorists were quick to notice the upper right-hand corner of the photo, where blurry lights can be seen hovering in space. Kelly's been periodically tweeting photos he takes from the space station with brief descriptions of what's featured in each photo. On the photo from day 233 of his year in space, he wrote, Once upon a star over southern India, good night from space station, hashtag year in space. 
the editor of the blog UFOSightingsDaily.com claimed Kelly might be trying to tell the world about the existence of aliens. Kelly is spending a year in space as part of the NASA twin study, while his twin, Mark, stays on Earth for comparison to study the effects on a person spending a year in orbit. Could Kelly be hinting at the existence of aliens, or is there another explanation for the lights in the photo? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Potential alien megastructure isn't the Death Star we were hoping for. So after weeks of speculation that maybe, just maybe, the human race may have discovered an alien megastructure built by a super advanced extraterrestrial civilization, it turns out that the anomaly is probably just a bunch of ice and dust, says NASA. Damn it, federally funded scientific research, when will you make me a lightsaber? So no, it looks like it's not the Death Star we were hoping for. An anomaly around the star KIC 8462852 that scientists earlier this year posited may be evidence of an alien megastructure is likely to be a swarm of comets, new research suggests. NASA used the Spitzer Space Telescope to observe data from the star in infrared light to test for other possibilities of what the debris might be. NASA says that if planetary impact or an asteroid collision was the cause of the debris, there would have been excess infrared light surrounding the star. Spitzer found none. While NASA doesn't rule out the megastructure theory, it gives more weight to the notion that comets of varying shapes and sizes are what caused the anomaly initially observed. So is that it? Will Yoda and Boba Fett not be joining us for the premiere of The Force Awakens? Are we really all alone? Sound off in the comments and let us know.